Hi, I'm Gavin, and these are the Coffee Conspiracies. This is the third episode of my field trip to Hull, 2017's UK city of culture, and once the centre of the UK's fishing and agricultural imports industry. This is a region that has struggled over the last 50 years, and as you can see from the overview here, salaries are below the national median, employment levels are a good 7% below the national average, and even business efficiency is low. Hull is part of what is still the UK's industrial heartland, and even with the gradual deindustrialization of the UK, almost half of those working in Hull have jobs in the factories and works around the city. It's an important employer, and dominates the regional economy. It also dominates the landscape. While I continued to enjoy the best that international squash has to offer, Hull's industrial sector is taking a beating, with empty sites and workshops everywhere. Looking on our Pikaya map, you can see how the economy has changed. While industrial sites are distributed evenly around the distribution corridors, there is an overwhelming concentration of vacancies all along the shoreline and docks, showing how the port has become less important to the city. Overall vacancies, at about 8.2%, are about average, with rentals at £23 per square metre, and falling efficiency in comparison to the other th sectors I discussed in previous episodes. Profit margins are a healthy 10%, but all this hides some incident. I've mentioned the fruit market development. This used to be the centre of the port, with fruit being imported and exported and processing companies all clustered together. Now the old industrial sites are being converted into shops and offices, or even demolished to make way for new open spaces. Should this prove successful, the likelihood is that more of these vacant industrial sites will be demolished and converted. In other words, those vacancy sites could have been much higher. All that said, the opportunity is to chase up the value chain. A modern plant using more sophisticated techniques could take advantage of this tremendous infrastructure and transport available in Hull. These are units 1 to 5 in English Street, very close to the port and within walking distance of yet another shopping centre. They are being offered at about £5,760 per year for 60 square metres. That's not a great deal of space, but you have the opportunity to combine a few of the units together. The site will suit a very small company, especially if you lack the appropriate garage required of all startups. Here's that Zoopla listing for the site, and our assessment of its potential is revenue of about £260,000, with margins of 9% and supporting 1-2 to two people. Depending on what you're producing, manufacturing is more about low-cost access to transport and infrastructure than it is about a local market, and this location offers quite a range of distribution points, from the port to rail and the nearby highway that I keep having to cross to get back and forth across town. I want to be clear that I do not think that the typical blue-collar industrial business will work here for reasons that will be obvious as soon as you start down that road, mostly to do with high-tech automation and the existing low-cost manufacturing hubs. On the other hand, if you're experimenting with something in the high-tech makerspace, Internet of Things for example, and you need to make your capital last as long as possible while you hunt towards a viable product and still have access to grown-up industrial infrastructure, then leaving the expensive locations in the south and heading to Hull could be a viable option for you. I enjoyed my few days in Hull. It helped that the weather was lovely and the scenery agreeable. The marina development feels a lot like the sort of place urban professionals such as myself will want to gather. There is promise here, and it may prove a good long-term bet. I do think that relying on the local economy will take a fair amount of cash reserves while you wait for things to take off, but as a springboard to the wider region, it's a lovely place to stay. My next field visit will be to Merthyr Tydfil in Wales. Until then, thanks for watching. Now let's go get some coffee.